In this video, I'll show you how you can use the FIGAF tool to automate SAP PI to CPI migrations. First off, we are here in our dashboard from the migration where we can see the status of all the artifacts that we have. So we can see we have some integrations that have been created or mapped to CPI iFlows, and we can see we have some test cases for some of them, and we have some of them already in production. With the tool, you're able to automate a lot of the tasks that's important for a PI to CPI migration. But let's first start up with, with an integration here. We want to migrate it. We have already done it, but let's start on a new one. 610 as the name of this iFlow. We check to see if everything is correct. We can see it finds some sender, uh, HTTP sender channels, receiver channels, etc. And it comes up with some information about what we need to perform manually. And among that, update the HTTP endpoint. We can click preview and this will give us an overview of what this iFlow would look like once we have completed it. And then we press migrate and this will perform the migration, create a new iFlow with all the relevant artifacts. In. If we click this icon, we will then all get into the iFlow that we have for this. And here we then have an option to go in and edit so we can see everything has, is included here. And we just need to update the endpoint here. And we can see, so for instance, mappings has been created. And if we look at this message mapping, then we can see it contains, uh, so here we have a partner name. This is a user defined function that has been replicated uh, in its script. So we have created the function library and migrated it also directly into here. And this makes it a lot easier to manage. Here we have a parameter ID that we have mapped from the interface and this all comes into uh, uh, external properties that are all configured and allow us to define these things. Good. So now we can save it as a version. So okay, we have done our modifications that we needed for this and we can select deploy and this will deploy it in the uh, CPI system, so we have a way to run this. Now I can go back to my overview, and one of the things I just need to do is I need to uh, synchronize this, synchronize the version of the iFlow we just created into this folder. Oh, it is in this folder, so we need to synchronize the folder to get all the artifacts and all the changes that have happened for this. Uh, this is because we want to be able to check the status of it. Good. Uh, so now we got the, this. So next up is we want to create some test cases. And to do that, we select the IQ again. We select we want to create a new test suite we want to use for this. We select fetch future messages. We select start recording. This will enable us to record on this uh, iFlow and what we now have is an option here to process some messages so I will send the messages and then I can pull these messages so I can pull these messages and now we have three inbound and three outgoing messages so we can create a test case and we can click it, it will create the test case for us to run this. And now we have created a test case that we can use for this. We can go back to our overview. And here we now have 15 test cases for this scenario and we can select migrate test cases. And we can see we got a new test case for this, um, just created. And what we can then do is we can select migrate to iFlow and here we can insert it into uh, the exist existing test suite which iFlow is it that we want to map this to and I guess it would be this one 
and it already knows because we are using from the scenario we already know what are the artifacts or what are the the different steps and which are they mapped to if you have migrated manually or migrated mappings you can insert your values into here uh, yourself so now we have created a new ICO for this we can look at the messages that we have for this so we have a number of inbound and outbound messages we can easily run it we just need to request license and we'll check the devops license also as a part of this devops would allow us to to test or transport this iflow later so now we can press run and this will then run this scenario on our cpi system so if we view the result here we can go to the run and we can see we have sent these messages and we can see we're getting some mer errors back and if we look at these errors we can use the diff functionality here so we can see that there is a date here and this is okay so we just click add to ignore this so we would ignore using this x path and that means that if we process the comparison again we get all of these successful so now we have created a successful test case that we can use in our migration so if we go back to our, our overview we can now see we have one test case for this scenario if you want to move this to our productive system we can also use the figaf tool for that so here we have the iflow we can see the versions that we have here and we do have our comparison option here that allows us to compare these ones with different type of scenarios so we have a visual comparison to see what is different between these ones and obviously since we've generated and it has been updated there could be some differences and we can drill into to these and see what are some of these differences are etc we also have a diff.html that will give us a, a version code that enables us to actually see what is better for these things good so now we have made our modification we can assign to ticket so we'll create a new ticket to production and i will just create a directly to our productive system obviously you would go through your uh, qa system and the system can also handle this i'll link it to a jira incident because then we have all the tracing from for this uh, when we go back so we can see here attach all the objects that sorry attach uh, all dependent objects and we can look up the test case so attach all dependent object would attach all the objects that is being used by this one we can look up all the test cases that exist so we have the one we just created and this is now a part of this transport so we can select we want to run this on our demo system or on our partner system here and what we will then be able to see is if we refresh here in a little bit we will see all of these are green so here we have the result it's green and now later this would also turn green uh, once the batch job has run uh, after the completion of it so that means that from our ticket we have an option to test and make sure that everything works as we would expect it to be and now we can see we got success out here and we can start the transport and the transport is using its own built-in system and when we are using this we have an option here to say okay we want to look at the configuration here we ha can see that we have already replaced this test host with the production host uh, automatically and if we want to overwrite some of these uh, items ourselves we can insert all of this and this makes it really easy for us to maintain and ensure that it is correct so we just press save and now from this view we have an overview of all the things that happens and we can click uh, send to approval an architect can approve it normally uh, you would not have be able to approve your own items but to simplify the demo i can and i can write why this is done or why it's rejected and now i can simply from here click press import 
and on this I'll then be able to actually see all the data and on my productive system I can then see why someone had made some changes on the system because they were all linked to the same ticket uh, making it a lot easier for us to manage and run the full integration scenario. Uh, so it needed a little more uh, for it to run and we have uh, yeah, it skipped and one of these here we are getting an error because a credential is missing which is I guess is, is okay. We can roll back if we want to uh, and then if we go back to our overview page we will now see that the iFlow we have created here is in production. So that means that from this overview, you have complete understanding of your migration, how it's going, what you have migrated, etc. I hope you want to try out the tool. So it's both used for the migration and it can also be used to manage and run the migration or the integration after the initial migration. I hope you find it useful and want to try it out. Thank you.